All right, so I got a special treat today. I was able to find this footage from Chicago from the 1893 World's Fair. And the quality is not the best, but it's the best I could find as of now. Um, if I find a better copy, then uh, maybe I'll redo this video. But basically what we're looking at here is a canal tour uh, via a gondola kind of ride through the uh, canals of the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Now the interesting thing about the Chicago World's Fair is it was the biggest one and because of that it stayed, um, you know, in, uh, it ran the longest. It ran longer than the San Francisco or even the uh, Buffalo one. And, uh, you know, like I said, the quality isn't the best, but we can see a few things here. It's just kind of an interesting kind of piece of film, you know, to appreciate. I'll put the link in the description to the original source. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you just kind of take a nice little relaxing trip down an 1893 canal. And like I said before, you know, about these World's Fairs, you know, there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people say that these are built out of paper mache and, you know, chicken wire and plywood. Uh, I don't think so. You know, maybe that's a little bit of plausible deniability there somewhere. But let me just look at this here. This is the grand, I think this is the main entryway that they're going under here in a second. And, and it's a darn shame that it's not better quality, but you can kind of get a, get an idea of how grandiose this was but as I was saying I just don't see that the, I just don't see that theory holding up you know that, that this was all plywood and plaster and chicken wire you know just and then the other thing that really the really the other thing that intrigues me is they talk about how many people came and I don't doubt that I don't doubt that there was a lot of people there. the photographs show that and it actually lines up with the inheritor theory and with the um the mud flood theory that they had to bring in people you know i just don't see people spending the money at the time and the official narrative saying that they were able to spend the money that i mean you know i mean we were a depressed country at the time not everybody had money to travel and to dress nice and you know travel was slow and arduous at the time so really what i think it is is they had the people shipped in Okay, and they say there were some famous people there, and I'm sure there were some famous people there, and that was kind of part of the cover story too. You know, Charlie Chaplin this, and Fatty Arbuckle that, you know, a bunch of people that nobody even, you know, most people don't even remember. But anyway, the point is, the movie actors at the time, uh, the point is, is that, Yes, there were a lot of people there, but where did they really come from? Because I just don't see the average American making the trip. They said people came from all over the world, from all over the country. Uh, it was a sight to be seen. I'm sure it was a sight to be seen right before they tore it down. You know, they, it's like they had to set the narrative. And a lot of people have brought this up that the reason that they had a little bit of everything, a little bit of every culture, a little bit of every food, a little bit of every fashion, was to set the narrative so that people like the next generation and the generation after that could say, oh, remember when that happened 50 years ago and then 100 years ago. And that brings me to one of my personal opinions about this whole thing, is that 100 years seems to be the key. Now it could be, moving on, it could be 150 years or even 200 years now because we have the technology. But the point is, is every hundred years they used to do this because then you could say you know like i was born in the early 80s so whenever i saw something from the late 1800s somebody would say oh that was about a hundred years old that's a hundred years old okay so now we're in 2021 okay so things that it doesn't work anymore because they're older than that now but there was a period where everything worked out great for the for the inheritors and the resetters because they say, oh, that was a hundred years old. You see where I'm going with this? It's a hundred years. So then they can tear down everything like they're doing now in big cities. You know, in mega cities and suburbia, they're tearing buildings down that are a hundred years old. Now they're keeping a few, 
but a lot of buildings that are almost 100 years, say 75 years, 50 years, they're tearing them down, okay? Because they have to make way and they have to keep that 100 year, or like I said, because of technology, it might extend further, okay? So I'm just kind of using this video because it's a, you know, it's kind of a boring video to be honest, it is. It's not the most exciting video. So I'm just kind of using this video as a backdrop to kind of explain a few theories I have and how it ties in with the World's Fair. So now we have, obviously we have the incubator baby phenomena at all the World's Fairs. And they say it was a way to introduce this technology and show it off to people that it was a very cutting edge technology at the time. But once again, I think that that's just plausible deniability. It's an excuse to bring in more bodies and also to condition people to these almost science fiction-like technologies that they had, you know? So, I mean, let's just assume, let's just give, you know, the skeptics the benefit of the doubt and say that everything about the construction of these things is legit. Let's just put aside the Tartarian uh, aspects and how it doesn't really line up with, you know, materials and labor, but let's just pretend for a second. Well, I still think that these World's Fairs are very bizarre. You know, they say, oh, well, you know, this and that, and it was a time. It's all excuses. There's no real good explanation as to why they would put so much money and time into these things, you know? I mean, they're just bizarre events in general when you really think about it. There's nothing normal, there's nothing practical, there's nothing sensical about these things. We don't do, we don't, we don't do anything near this grandiose now. Why not? Why wouldn't we? Oh, because we have amusement parks and we have, you know, music festivals. Nah. Why not? Why not do something like this? Why not build a big temporary city, you know, just for the hell of it? Why not? Seems like the thing to do. You know, if we did it back then, why wouldn't we do it now? You know, it'd be fun, right? You know, it'd be cheaper, it'd be easier, it'd be faster, more people would come. Why don't, why don't we do it now? Huh? See, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. Because if it was really fun, everybody had a great time, and it was totally worth doing, why not, why not, why not do it? We haven't had a World's Fair since, and I could be wrong, but I think the early 60s there in, in Queens. Now somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, I should have looked it up, I guess, but, um, you know what I'm saying? I think, what was it? The last World's Fair we had was like 1963 or something like that in Queens. But I'm not sure, Queens, New York. Anyways, point being, is it's extremely hard to find good footage, good film of, of these events. Unfortunately, I'd like to do more videos and less pictures. The picture thing, you know, we've kind of all seen all the good pictures. So, you know, if anybody has any links to any good World's Fair footage, doesn't matter which one, just any of them, you know, let me know in the comments in the link or send me a message on Instagram. And, you know, let's try, to, let's try to really analyze, try to find some high quality footage, not just pictures. Pictures are great, but we've really, we really kind of uh, scraped the barrel on that. So, anyways, like I was saying, the World's Fairs are strange. The whole thing's strange, and the whole uh, romance of the, the Greco-Roman and the ancient Rome, you know, aesthetics, you know, I understand that America's past is, is rooted in Europe and it's rooted in democracy and it's rooted in Western civilization originating in those areas like Greece and Rome. But, I mean, I think it continues to this day. You still see a lot of, a lot of architecture that harkens back to that style because it is a classic style. It does have a certain timeless elegance to it. But the point is, is we had a blank canvas. We had a clean slate, this country. The Europeans, I'm saying. Why did we choose to perpetuate this grandiose, you know, pre-Christian um, architecture? There's something that it, it just must speak to these people in such a way that it needs to be worshipped and carried on, which is fine, which is harmless, really, from an aesthetic, from a purely visual. But I believe that there is some symbology to this. There is some deeper meaning as to why they had to build things like this or why they chose to build things like this, you know? Even the people who supposedly built it, the Tartarians, or even 
us as as mimickers, as as trying to copy that style. As some people said that this is all fake, and that we were merely okay, fine. But why? See, that's that's my issue. Is it doesn't matter who built it anymore. We need to move past that because we we're we're going to attract more people into researching if we kind of just put that on the back burner for a second until we get some definitive proof. Now, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. But ultimately, what we need to do is we need to focus on why there was so much symbology in these world's fairs. You know, we see the same kind of weird symbology in award ceremonies nowadays, like the Oscars, the Grammys, Gold Glass, you know, so on and so forth. Things like that, we see a lot of weird rituals. So I think that the world's fairs were rituals. There were symbolic rituals, they were pagan rituals to kind of give people some clues as to where this thing was going. You know, and the people were different, and uh, a lot of things were different back then. It was a strange period. As I said before, the period in America between 1812 and 1915, 1916, 1920, very strange period in American history. Very strange. You know, so that's all I'm going to say, just because this video wasn't the best quality. So I felt like it was just a good opportunity just to kind of you know, add my two cents into the whole World's Fair thing, and I'll probably do another video where I, uh, I speak about that a little bit more, you know. Uh, feel free to mute and just enjoy the film on a second viewing without my narration. I won't be offended, and uh, I hope that this helps with your research, or hopes with your understanding of the World's Fairs, and like I said, if you have any links to better footage or more footage, let me know in the comments, or send me messages on Instagram. All right, thank you, goodbye.